fearless leader counting today's profits. <laughs> profits, that's a lot. I don't know how it works in Canada, Eddie, but in Australia, you need to bring in more money than you spend before you call it a profit. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie. Yeah, I feel like I know you. We talk so much via the camera. I'd like to meet you someday. Ooh, nice yeah. Yeah. And what Chuck really says about us. I'm happy to announce that Eddie's entry into the Open Doors program was accepted. Sarah McDonald will be this year's overseas student visitor. Yes. Chuck, where are you going? The road out of town's that away. We're gonna miss you, Chuckleberry. Miss you like a pain in the butt. <laughs> Give our best to Canada. Why? Canada's given us its worst. Hey, drop kicks. <laughs> Look this way. I wanna show my buddies back home what a bunch of major league losers look like. Hey, hey, Canada, hey, we love you. Hello, Canada. Hey, 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 <laughs> you guys, you got heck of potential. You know, even without the fake suits, you look like a bunch of apes. Get it? Looks like we've got company. Get off of there, reptiles. Finn's gonna pay up. Does Chuck owe you some money or something? I'll need some help. Just get off. We know he's there. Thanks you a handbag? Dead meat, then. He's not there, Tony. Got eyes, moron. Well, you tell him if he shoots his mug around here again, it's gonna get rearranged. Yeah, yeah you, you tell, tell him. him. Shut up. Come on. They're gone. Those drop kicks. Sometimes it's just too easy. See, Eddie, it's almost like we know you, even though we've never met you. Come and see us sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Actors, you ain't. Eddie will bust a gut. <laughs> Sarah is down at the woodyard paying some bills. She shouldn't be too long. I wasn't looking for her. <laughs> yeah, right. We're what really are we trying? As if. <laughs> I'll miss you guys. Not. <laughs> yeah, sure. You will, Chucky! I'm you sure. will! Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodbye, Chucky, baby. We hate to see you go. We know you won't be gone too long, but we want you to know. We won't get lonely. We won't get lonely. We can't die. A part of me wishes I hadn't heard that. A large part. Come on, Chuck. We don't want you to miss your plane. In a minute! What are you waiting for, sweet lips? That was it. At the end of the song, you meant to ride off into the sunset. There ain't no encore, Chucko. I just don't want to forget anything, guys. Who are you talking uh, to? No one. No kidding. Let's get a move on. If you miss that plane, I'll be cooking for you too, and that is not going to happen. Uh-oh, here comes Sarah, and things do not look like good wood. Exhibiting high levels of aggression. I don't believe it, and has done it twice again. Well, what is it this time? She's put up all the wood from down at the yard. We can't get any for two months. Well, no worries. There's other wood yards along the river. Edna can't buy it all up. That's true, but it's the principle behind it, Dad. It really grates. Oh, Sarah, Chuck's gone. He left for the airport about 10 minutes ago. Good riddance, hope I never see that Canadian smart mouth again. Your facial expression contradicts your statement, and the exaggerated emphasis suggests overcompensation. I mean, we don't believe you. Cut the psychology. Husharoni. These are the local ghosts. Say hi, dudes. I'm not, I'm not dissing you, Eddie. It's just they don't. Oh, good, you're things. here, Eddie. I need to get Sarah McDonald's details from you so we can start processing the parental approval form. Um. You didn't uh, forget to ask Mr. McDonald again. Uh, 
actually, I didn't talk to them until late last night, and once we started talking, we were all so excited. Yeah, I forgot. Well, we may not be able to process the form in time. I wonder, would it speed things up if Mr. McDonald contacted you directly? That's a good idea. It's probably the only way we can get it done in time. Okay, I'll call Mr. McDonald and make sure he calls you. Good. Don't forget, Eddie. Okay. I might pull this off yet. Relieved, come on. A load of cargo for us is a load of grief for Edna or in the River Queen. Hurry it up! Little more? No. Oh, isn't that the River Queen? Isn't this cargo for the Tangala Rose? No. We can take this cargo. No, no, this is for the River Queen. The River Queen? It's that way. Oh. Let's run. No one's home. Hey, brighten up, team. Come on. Dad, our cargo bookings have dropped 20% since the River Queen returned to service. Ah, stop worrying. Things will pick up. But, Dad... But people will try out the River Queen and soon realise we give better and more friendly service. I admire your optimism in the face of soul-crushing failure. And then there's Sarah. All she cares about is riverboats and more riverboats. She's obsessed. The only way to get her off the riverboat is with a better riverboat. You kids look a bit down. Yeah, yeah, you do look a bit uh, uh, unhappy. If Chuck was here, the mood would certainly be less subdued. Maybe I should leave town. Then I'd have your undying admiration. <laughs> Chuck has his faults, but he certainly could attract business. Hey, Mish. Well, his crazy ideas worked. Well, he's not here, so he can't help us now. Mr Finn's got some interesting news from Canada. Synchronicity! Chuck's got a plan. Uh, no, 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 it's not from Charles. He wouldn't have arrived yet. But there's an email at my place, which I think Sarah should take a look at. This riverboat crowd in Canada is having a youth conference, and they've invited Sarah to represent Australia. Canada? Sarah, you might get to see Chuck. It says here that Chuck has been giving weekly updates on the Tingala Rose. So that's how they found out about Sarah. Oh, look at this. It says they've been exhibiting new technologies designed to improve the efficiencies of steam engines. Maybe you could bring back some blueprints. I could build most of that stuff at a fraction of the cost. Thanks, Mr Finn. It's certainly something to think about. No trouble, Sarah. Sounds like it could be fun. Are you going to ring Chuck and tell him? He'll want to know you're coming. I wonder if the boats travel on the other side of the river over there. OK, spill it. What's your problem? Look, River Becky. Wait, oh, look. Davos sign. River Queen. Find Ride the majestic the River Queen. Oh, that'll bring in the business. Hey, Sarah. How does this sound? 95% of passengers ride the River Queen. The figure speaks for itself. Sounds like false advertising to me. I suppose this was Edna's idea. Actually, it was Spider's idea. Yeah, we've shown Miss Bonifaci how to make a few more dollars out of her place. Minus the bandits' uh, finder's fee. I can't believe you'd allow these two bandits to put you in the middle of a lawsuit. Lawsuit? What lawsuit? I can prove the figure on your sign is wrong. So my dad could sue you. But if the signs were to come down, I can't see why we would need to concern ourselves with messy litigation. What are you trying to do to me, you bandits? This advertising paper isn't worth a crumpet to me if it shackles me with legal eagles. I'm so sorry, girls. I hope this won't jeopardise my relationship with your mum. <laughs> and you owe me $7 for what you've just eaten. Come on. Feeling better? Just a little. Enough to go to Canada? Mm -hmm. Hurry up, quick. Time is money. You can help save money in operation costs. Let me guess. The amazing North American Riverboat Society. Well, I have to admit, I'm surprised you didn't come to me with this right away. This could affect all of us. I doubt it would make any difference. Is there another problem here? Isn't it obvious? This has all the markings of a Chuck Finn practical joke. I'm not giving him the satisfaction of falling for it. It's highly improbable that Chuck would be capable of such a prank. His cruelty quotient would have to be way off the scale, like Tiny's. Doesn't seem like Chuck. 
This, uh, Mr. Eddie Hutchinson says here's something about offering to pay for your airfare. Well, at least let me check it out. Go ahead. It's a free country. I can't stop you making a fool of yourself. Mr. Hutchinson. Mr. Hutchinson. Yes, that's how Mr. McDonald kept referring to you. Are you telling me everything, Eddie? No, I haven't. <laughs> Slip my mind. Unslip it then. Um, uh, well, um, uh, they're very serious people over there in Australia. I mean, they still celebrate the Queen's birthday. So? So, it's that whole ye old English thing. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Mr. McDonald called me Master Eddie. Really? Then explain why Mr. McDonald thought I was your secretary. Well, that's just another example of what they call cross-cultural confusion. You see, in Australia, secretaries do all the organizing, so it... Enough! I don't want to hear it. In any case, it may all be for nothing. Sarah may not be able to accept our invitation. Why not? Something about not wanting to leave when the riverboat's having trouble getting passengers. Okay, okay thanks, Mr. I, I, I gotta go. Get ready, she's coming. It's a goer. The riverboat mob's legitimate. Dad, I can't go to Canada now and leave you all the work. Oh, it won't just be me. We'll all put in a bit extra and pick up the slack. It's a nice thought, guys, but really, we're in enough trouble already without you three helping out. Maybe Dad can manage without me next year. I'll go then. Whoa, man. She's on the dance floor, but she ain't here in the band. Maybe she's missing her dancing partner. Just where does Sarah come off saying we can't manage without her? That's all I want to know. Well, I'd like to know why she treats me like a dumb blonde. I mean, I'm not even blonde. Being blonde doesn't necessarily mean being dumb, Linda. That's just stereotyping. So, I'm not a stereotype either. Ugh, look it up in the dictionary. Look up Big Head while you're at it, under Sarah McDonald. The full Monty for everyone. We are cashed up. Ah, five hot dogs with a lot coming up. Bet you don't get that kind of money working on the Rose Wreck. We don't do it for the money. We do it for... Why do we do it? Good question. There's more to the enjoyment of life than just making money. <laughs> Losers. Losers. Well, you won't get to enjoy the Tingala Rose for much longer. Edna says we can use it as a clubhouse after yeah. she runs you off the river. About all it's good for. Yeah. Doesn't it get boring always hanging around with the lowest common denominators? You go calling people common, Pee Wee, and you'll be smiling on the other side of your face. You're just a stereotype. What did she say? Go look it up in the dictionary under. Ay, 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 you bandicoots. S. Now, do you want to eat these hot dogs or wear them? Easy, boys. The River Queen is full to the gunnels, as they say, with cargo and passengers. And Granny Smith at Simpson's Landing needs some wool for her charity knitting. If you can't do it... Uh, we'll take it up to her. Don't say I never do you any favours. But you're not, Mrs Littlemore. You know we don't charge Granny Smith for anything to do with her charity work. More fool you, then. Business is business. Dad, we haven't got any other cargo for some things landing. So if we go that far for nothing, then it'll cost more in fuel than our freight charges. Well, we have to take care of our customers, Sarah. But Granny Smith isn't a customer. Oh, yes, she is. Just not a paying one. Anyway, we can pick up that wood we need. Wood you haven't loaded yet. No, there's no cargo to load, so your help wasn't missed. That's not fair, Sarah. We knew we weren't needed. Circumstances might have changed in the last half hour where you were all feeding your faces in the milk bar. But they didn't, did they? Hey, Better get some sting going. The River Queen's already leaving. Hope we didn't keep you. No hurry, Hamish. No, why run to bankruptcy oh. when you can walk? What's up, her ladies, Maximus? Excuse me. I didn't know we needed some new tickets. We didn't, but stock was low and we don't want to run out. Always thinking ahead, aren't you, Sarah? If I don't think ahead, Nobody else will. Thanks for ordering that extra engine oil. I almost forgot. Sometimes I think you'd forget your head if it wasn't screwed up. 
Don't know how we'd manage without you. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Riding down the river, I'm bold quiver. Gonna meet my baby. I think I'm kind of crazy. Riding down the river. Now, have you chosen your four parts? Yes. So don't tell me what they are. So how would you like it? One at a time or all at once? Mm. All at once. Okay, Munchkin, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> We're pulling into Simpson's Landing if anybody even cares. Oh, you've been sucking on lemons, kiddo. What? Well, somebody's put a sour look on your face. Maybe it's just because I'm tired of having to remind you and fingers to disappear. But we haven't got any cargo to unload here anyway, have we? No, but we do refuel here and we have to take on extra wood because of Edna. We knew that. We were going to do it. Not unless I'd reminded you. You don't know that for a fact. I don't have to. I know you lot. You're responsible. Forgetful, disorganised layabouts. You said it. be the River Queen arriving. We've been here nearly two hours. How come it took the River Queen so long to get here? She had a full load on. We were almost empty. But still, we were the first boat to arrive by two hours. Well, yeah, if you look at it that way. You have to tell Hamish. Hamish! But can I be sued? Highly unlikely. The sign only states the facts. The Tingala Rose did take two hours less than the River Queen to reach Simpson's Landing, although it didn't have any... Although it's hard to believe, it's the truth. Recently, the Tingala Rose took two hours less than its competitor to reach Simpson's Landing. The figures speak for themselves. You're all crazy, you know that? Right this way, folks. Business is up. We made a good sign. Crazy, were we? I have to admit, that sign's had an effect. Yeah, it's not bad for a bunch of irresponsible, forgetful, disorganised layabouts. Hey, hey, I'm sorry. Well, I told you there was no need to panic. Just needed to be patient, that's all. Tom, everyone. Looks busy. Hey, good day, William. Yeah, you're not wrong. How's the Finnmaster, Mr Finn? Does he miss us? Oh, I'm sure he does. Charles and his mother arrived safe and sound last night our time. Uh, but I'm, I'm here mainly to give you this email that arrived from the riverboat people. This may even have an impact on you, Sarah. It says there's a group of travel agents looking forward to meeting you during your stay in Canada. It also mentions they may make a trip out to evaluate the Tingala Rose. I'm sure you can convince them, Sarah. Don't worry. I didn't tell Charles about your offer. He'd no doubt put pressure on you. And believe me, I know how persistent he can be. Thanks, Mr Finn, but the pressure keeps building anyway. You think so? This could mean more tourists, and that helps the whole area. Sounds too good to be true. Have you made a decision, Sarah? Well, we won't forget to order more tickets. We'll make sure the lounge room stays uh, uncluttered, especially when the customers are around. And I'll make sure the oil stock's kept up. Look, we made a list. Oh, there you are, Eddie. Can I have this? Sure, go ahead. You gave it to me yesterday. Did I? Hmm. You'll be happy to hear that Sarah has accepted our invitation. It hinged on some tourist agents for some reason. Well, of course it would. I mean, they must have convinced her that Canada's a great country. Just some more of that... I know, I know. Cross-cultural confusion. She can't wait to get over here and meet everyone. She's so cool. She practically runs her old man's business. Well, I think it's a bit creepy. You got a thing for this girl. When we watch those videos of yours, it's like the diary of a stalker. Easy. And I have not got a... Crocodile man and all that, you know, shrimps on the barbies, because you know the real, uh, real McCoy Aussie slang. You gotta have like. Anyway, uh, don't don't have I just, you know, pull your finger out. You know, a guy's name Jake I... and all that. <laughs> G'day, mate. You look like you've seen a ghost. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? The question is, what have you been doing here? I mean, everyone and their dogs been calling me Chuck. Yeah, well, they saw the. Uh... <laughs> you should have told me you were coming. Hey, chill, no sweat, man. See, let's just keep a lid on things now, you see. The thing is, I've been telling some of the guys around there about my girlfriend, Sarah, back in Australia. But I know it's not exactly the truth, but, um, you know, 
I got an image to protect, so just between us, buds, okay? He's back from the land down under, and no one's gonna steal his thunder. <laughs> oh boy. He's gonna regret this. He's gonna regret this. What are you talking about? Chuck Finn. If I find out that he's behind this, Sarah, get over it. But you'll both be in Canada, so you might see him. If I thought for one minute I'd have to spend time with that, that focus here. The tourist agencies, the riverboat people. You're right. This is for the Tungalaroos. And it is pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. Whenever you're ready, Sarah. We gotta get to the airport. Just a moment. Don't forget the blueprints. Don't worry, Sarah. Yeah, piece of pie. That's Bye. cake. See ya. Bye. See ya. Oh. Oh. I know I'm gonna regret this.